You know, Ben Shapiro gets chased off of college campuses so much, the conspiracy part of my brain is saying maybe Ben Shapiro is secretly organizing with Antifa to generate press attention. I'm kidding. I really don't think that's true. But my God, how many times do I see a story where they target Ben Shapiro, try and get him removed, and Ben is one of the most tepid conservative personalities there is? And I'm not saying that to be disrespectful. I'm saying you have Milo, who is like bombastic and flamboyant, and you have Ben, who is just a fast-talking conservative with typical conservative opinions. What, a, a lot of what Ben says isn't surprising to me to hear them. And, you know, there, there's some things that I, I, I find interesting in Ben Shapiro's arguments, but I disagree with a lot of what he says. Plain and simple, he's a conservative, and I don't agree with him for the most part. And as someone who is a sane, rational human being, I would like to hear him present his arguments, and I would encourage people who are of my political disposition to challenge him at his events. Like, that's that's it. You, he has an event, show up, hear him out, write, write down what he says. When you, like, okay, so here's, here's what you do. He'll be talking, right? He'll say something that you disagree with, write that down, come up with a question to challenge that idea, and see if he can. It's very likely Ben has thought through most of his positions and will, and will be able to. But that's, that's what you should do. You shouldn't do this. Look at this. Uh, so let's pull up the big picture. It's a big poster. I believe that's a picture of Ben Shapiro. Yes. And there's an X through it and it says, Hey, Yaf, get security. And that's the Young America. I believe it's Young America Foundation. Get security. That's a threat. They're straight up threatening Ben Shapiro and this and, and Young, Amer Young American Foundation because they don't like their ideas. Okay. At what point do those people who are threatening violence against other people for talking realize they're the baddies? Yes. You are the baddies. It's like, uh, as a reference to that sketch, I can't remember uh, Hamish and Andy or the guys who made it, where they're like pretending to be Nazis and they realize they have the skull and crossbones as their symbol and they're like, are we the baddies? Like, yes, you are threatening violence against someone because he talks. That's it. You don't like that he talks, so you're threatening them. You're the baddies. So... They say, John Bansaf has spent years denouncing his employer, George Washington University, for investigating its students for their free speech. But it was the private university's refusal to condemn posters that threatened physical violence against a conservative pundit that really set off the law professor last week. GWU, silent and impotent over free speech intimidation, Bansaf tiled an email blast referring to the Young Americans for Freedom, that's what it's called, Young Americans for Freedom, event featuring Daily Wire editor Ben Shapiro. Hours before the January 17th event, posters appeared around campus that read, Hey, Yaf, get security with a red X over a picture of Shapiro. Bansaf, who teaches public interest law and pioneered anti-smoking litigation campaigns, contrasted the university's quickness to investigate offensive speech with its hands-off approach to the anti-Shapiro flyers. No one has taken responsibility for posting the flyers, which were clearly threatening unlawful physical violence toward Shapiro and the Yaf chapter in an attempt to get the event canceled, he wrote. So sunlight is the best disinfection, et cetera, et cetera. You get the point. I'm not reading this because I want to specifically highlight the criticism from this one man, but I do want to point out the threats of violence that popped up all over this uh, university. But one of the things I want to highlight is that, what is this? Not even a day later, another university is trying to block Shapiro from speaking. Here's their strategy. We'll, we'll come back to the first story and, and we're some of the threat stuff. But the, 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 the reason I'm talking about this is because, my God, why is Ben Shapiro the target for these people? I called him tepid for a reason. Ben Shapiro is, and again, it's not disrespectful. It's, it's meant to be like, he's conventional. It's, it's, he's not the, like, the, the craziest, most insane. Okay, there was, an, there was a protest at Berkeley, and they pulled quotes from Shapiro from like 10 years ago. And I was just like, how old was Ben Shapiro 10 years ago? He's like 30, what is he, like 35 or something? He's like in his 20s, and he said something controversial and, and, and inflammatory. And you can't find quotes for him from him today to criticize? It's because Ben Shapiro is like a very middle of the road, like your typical conservative voice. I'm not saying he's centrist. I'm saying it's like he's just a typical conservative. Why is Ben Shapiro so popular and so famous? Why does he have so many followers? Because he speaks to the average conservative. That's, that's just it. He's not a far right fringe personality. He's not an extremist. He's not alt right. He's none of these things. And I mean, maybe that's why they target him because he's, 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 he's big, right? But it's absurd to me that he gets the ire that he does, right? So, uh, so let's read through this. 
the latest disgruntled university attempting to block Daily Wire editor-in-chief Ben Shapiro from speaking, Loyola Marymount University in LA, is requiring the Young Americans for Freedom chapter at the university, which is sponsoring the event, to answer a series of ridiculous, reflective questions before they will let Yav book a venue for the speech. As Spencer Brown, spokesman for Yav, reports, after a whopping six weeks of waiting, LMU administrators finally notified Young Americans for Freedom leaders that they, that they, before being able to book a venue for a venue for Shapiro to speak, would need to go through additional review due to Shapiro's status as a notable speaker. LMU administrators are requiring the YAF chapter to review the, sc- the school's guiding principles for student activities and programming and respond to the reflective questions. The YAF chapter's response will then determine during the administrator's review whether Shapiro will be allowed to speak on campus. The reflective questions offer a smorgasbord of queries designed to prove that Shapiro's event will not offend the snowflakes on campus who might be disturbed by a perspective they don't endorse, some salient examples. How will the event planners ensure that the content of the program uplifts the worth and dignity of individuals? (laughs) I'm not, I didn't realize that was a requirement for debate. Criticism of individuals typically is, it can can be negative. Like you put people down, okay? That's, that's 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 a normal thing. We're not all Skittles and rainbows where everything is only positive. If there are elements of this program that may not respect or could be perceived to not respect all cultures, how will the organizers ensure this is not the case? That's clearly a biased question, plain and simple. How will the event organizers promote a healthy environment for dialogue and our social activity? How will multiple or differing points of view be represented and presented during the program? No, a speaker presents their point of view, and then you book a speaker later who may contrast that point of view. How does the program encourage the attendance of all individuals? In what ways will the event planners work to reduce unhealthy behavior? Who defines what that means? Fantastic. How will the event planners ensure that the program does not create a negative on-campus at Westchester Community Impact? Wait, what? A negative on-campus and Westchester Community Impact? I see. In what ways does the program offer well-balanced educational content? Brown speculates that prior, that prior appearances by leftists may not have been subjected to such stringencies. Noticing a lecture by Aaron Aubrey Kaplan, a New York Times opinion contributor on blackness and identity a state of action celebration where speakers emphasized how college students can take steps to live a more sustainable lifestyle. And students learned how they can become an advocate for climate action. An event titled Spiritual Bodies, Women of Color on Religion, Race, and Gender, featuring three actresses who performed spoken word poems and book excerpts from various contemporary female voices. The performances of these works recognized the intersectionality and multiplicity of women in society and a discussion. This is just mumbo jumbo. I, I, I feel like I'm not even reading words at this point. And discussions, diversity, and inclusive and, and inclusive excellent event addressing issues such as privilege, police brutality, intersectionality, microaggressions, and the Black Lives Matter movement. LMU is also the latest in a series of Jesuit universities that has tried to block Shapiro from speaking. DePaul University threatened to arrest Shapiro if he stepped onto their campus in November 2016. And this past November, Gozanga University declined a speaking event by Shapiro scheduled for spring 2019. And then we have this uh, tweet from Spencer Brown, paging the Department of Mind Control. LMU YAF is being forced to answer absurd reflective questions, including how they'll ensure attendees uh, at their planned YAF lecture with Ben Shapiro don't perceive Shapiro's words as disrespectful. Everything's disrespectful. Everything is offensive. And what we see here is the weaponization of ideology. I mean, look, these people are in a position of power. And they've clearly slanted questions that are going to make it impossible to criticize certain ideas that they don't like. Because I assure you, a Black Lives Matter event would be unwelcoming to many people. Would Ben Shapiro feel welcome to attend a, you know, Black Lives Matter inclusivity event? He probably wouldn't feel welcomed in the sense that they're going to be nice to him. But I'm sure Ben Shapiro is the kind of person who doesn't care whether or not people are going to be mean to him or not. Because as many of you know, I don't, I don't think he, I don't know if he made this up, but Ben is very famous for his, for saying facts don't care about your feelings. And that means he, of all people, is not going to care how you feel about him attending. And once again, as I've stated in the last video, conservatives love debate. They do. They love it. Liberals don't. Liberals want to throw these questions at conservatives so that they can justifiably say, oh, well, you know, it was going to be offensive to too many people. It was, was bad for the community. It was, you know, but they're not going to ask these questions to the far left who would probably get the same backlash from other groups who don't feel welcome when they insult them. 
You know, when you go up on stage and claim that there's like white privilege, which to an extent, I understand the idea of white privilege. Don't get me wrong. But when you try to claim something like Bernie Sanders claimed that white people don't understand what it's like to be poor, you're not being very inclusive there. But we know this isn't about actually being inclusive. Of course it's not. It's about saying, look, I'll tell you why I think the school does this. Do I think that the, the, the school hates Ben Shapiro and hates conservatives? I don't. I think they're terrified of the fringe vocal minority and Antifa showing up with crowbars, baseball bats, and Molotov cocktails and destroying things. And thus, they're going to do whatever they can from an administrative point of view, from a bureaucratic point of view, to block Ben Shapiro, lest they have to spend money on security because the fringe wackos at their schools of the far left are going to, de- they're going to destroy things. Plain and simple. But you know what? Ben Shapiro is, is certainly the new face of being blocked from speaking at universities. There you go. But I, you know what? I, I don't know. I, ben doesn't probably care for the most part. I think we can all recognize it's, it's a problem to an extent. And, and, and it is true that certain left-wing speakers are being banned, have, have been banned or have been fired. But when you have someone as high profile as Ben repeatedly, you know, they throw roadblocks in his way. Well, there you go. Anyway, I got one more video coming up in a few minutes. Stick around. I will see you then.